Hey everyone, it's Ryan with The Smart House and on today's video, we're gonna take a look at the SunFounder Raspad 3. Now, the team at SunFounder reached out to me after seeing my videos on Home Assistant and Raspberry Pis and asked if I to take a look at their new Raspberry Pi based tablet. So, of course, I jumped at the opportunity and here we are. Now, this product is basically a DIY tablet. So, all you need to provide is a Raspberry Pi 4 and an SD card. And then you've got a fully functional tablet with external ports and a five hour battery life. Now, you can use this for all sorts of projects around the house or development. They have a, quite a few different project ideas on their website if you, for a standalone device, or you can switch up your operating system by just swapping out the SD card on the external SD card access. So this device is the third in SunFounder's line of Raspads. So the version three started off as a Kickstarter campaign in 2002. They raised over $300,000 in funding and had over 1,800 backers. Overall, between their three versions of the Raspad, they've raised over $900,000 in crowdfunding. Now, like I mentioned before, all you have to do is drop a Raspberry Pi into this thing set up the proper operating system and you're off and running. So this isn't ideal for just a project you're gonna leave hanging on the wall. For that, you can stick to an inexpensive Amazon Fire. Now this is something you wanna use for development or a project where you wanna run full bore Raspbian on a Raspberry Pi. So the cool thing is, is that, like I mentioned before, all of the Raspberry Pi's functions have been either port replicated out or have pass-throughs on them. So you can access all the core functions of a Raspberry Pi without having to even open the case. Also in today's video, I'm gonna show you what comes with this tablet, how to assemble and set it up, and some cool projects that you can do with it. So let's take a look. All right, so let's take a look at the features of the Raspad 3. Let's start with the main feature, the 10.1 inch multi-touch display. So it has a native resolution of 1200 by 800 and supports up to 10 point multi-touch. Now on the left side of the tablet, this is where you'll find most of the ports on the Raspad. So we have three USB 3.0 ports that are replicated from the Raspberry Pi. We've got a single full-size HDMI port. We have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and we have the DC power port, which powers both the Raspberry Pi and the tablet's hardware and also charges the battery. Now on the other side, this is where you're gonna find the power indicator showing whether Raspberry Pi is on or off, the battery charging indicator, which shows you both if it's charging and the current battery level, and the combination brightness and volume control. Now, depending on which one of these two buttons you press first, it'll either allow you to adjust the brightness or the volume using the up and down buttons. So if you press, if you press the down arrow first, it's gonna bring up the brightness control and allows you to turn up and down the brightness on the tablet. If you press the plus button first, it'll let you then select the volume and then turn that up or down. And finally, and then the last button is the power button. Now this is a multi-use power button. If you press it a single time, it turns off the display and the fan and pressing it again will turn those both back on again. Now you may have to touch the screen to wake up the Pi if the OS has gone to sleep. Or if you hold down the power button for three seconds, it'll power on or off the Raspberry Pi and the tablet. You'll also find a finger hold, which is used when you remove the screws to take the back off. Now finally, we see the external micro SD port. Now they've replicated the internal micro SD card slot on the Raspberry Pi to the outside. This allows you to power the Pi off and change SD cards for different OSs. Now one thing to note is to make sure that you follow the instructions on the back, which say remove the SD card before you attempt to remove the back. I made this mistake and the SD card thankfully didn't break, but it did go flying across my room. On the top face is the pass-through for a ribbon cable to access the Raspberry Pi's GPIO port. Finally, on the bottom is a pass-through for the Raspberry Pi camera if you happen to use one and the screw access to open the back of the tablet. Now, if we open up the inside, we'll see the main board that takes care of most of the tablet's core functions like battery charging, fan control, port pass-through, and sound. You also find the dual internal speaker and the daughter board that has the button interface, indicator lights, and SD card extender. And finally, you'll find up above the 3500 milliamp hour battery. So now that we know the features of the tablet, let's see what we need to actually provide to get this to function. So in addition to the tablet, you'll need to purchase a Raspberry Pi 4 any micro SD card. Now I recommend something 65 gigs or bigger so you have space to expand for different projects. It's also a good idea to have a USB keyboard and mouse lying around that makes it easier to set up some of the extra functions like the right click 
or adding in more commands. Now you can do this using SSH and I'll show you how to set that up when we do flash the SD card for the Raspberry Pi. So also included in the kit are all the shortened cables you need to connect the Pi to the tablet when opening the back. Now included are short versions of two micro HDMI to HDMI cables, a USB A to A cable, short ethernet cable, a USB C to C, and their micro SD ribbon cable used to interface with the daughter board. Also included is the XL SHIM module. Now this chip has the accelerometer on it, which is used to detect the orientation of the tablet so it can flip the screen. Also included is the hardware needed to set this all up, which includes a power supply to power both the Pi and the tablet itself, a case fan, a screwdriver, all the mounting screws necessary, and it also includes heat sinks for the Raspberry Pi. Now I had already applied these to my Pi, that's why I don't include them on this list, but you can see that here, they've been stuck to the Pi in the appropriate locations. Now let's look at how to install the Pi in the tablet and get everything connected up. All right, so obviously we need to go ahead and take the tablet out of the box and flip it over on its back so we can access the screws. You can use the included screwdriver. Go ahead and remove the five screws on the back and set them aside someplace safely. All right, so the first step is to take the micro SD ribbon cable and go ahead and plug that into the SD card slot on the Pi. Then we're gonna go ahead and attach the two micro HDMI cables to the Pi. Make sure you pay attention to which order they go in. One is longer than the other. Then we'll go ahead and attach the USB-C cable. Now with the USB port, make sure you plug it into one of the USB 3.0 ports on the Pi. Now I recommend the top one so it gives you some clearance to connect it. Then we'll go ahead and connect the ethernet cable. Finally, we want to install the SHIM accelerometer. Now this goes over the first six pins to the left of the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. Next, let's go ahead and attach the HDMI cables to the main board inside on the back of the tablet. Now note, you may have to flip them over to get them to go into the correct orientation. Then we connect the USB-C, the USB-A, and the ethernet cables. Now we want to go ahead and grab the M2.5 by four screws, which are the same that we use on the back and secure the Pi to the base plate. Now the next step's a little tricky if you haven't attached a ribbon cable before, but to attach the ribbon cable, you need to lift up on the black retention clip and slide the ribbon cable completely into the connector. Now you want to make sure that there is that you cannot see any of the connectors on the ribbon cable. They need to be completely seated in the white connector before you press down on the black piece to secure it into place. Now finally, we're gonna go ahead and install the fan. So we wanna make sure that the label side is down so the fan is exhausting out of the case. Then you wanna grab your M2.5 by nine screws and go ahead and put all four of them in to the bosses so that it can securely connect. Then we need to make sure we connect the fan header to the main board. Now this can only go in one direction so you don't have to worry. Now the last thing to check before you put the back on is to make sure that no cables pass over the center screw. They've molded in two convenient little holders to keep cables out of that area. So once that's done, go ahead and snap the back on, then go ahead and put the five screws back in to secure the back of the tablet. Now your assembly's finished. Next, we can move on to installing the Raspberry Pi OS on an SD card and getting it connected into the tablet. All right, so to flash the SD card, obviously we just need to stick that into your computer and then open up the Raspberry Pi OS installer. Now, of course, this is a free download that you can get to from this link below. Once you open up the installer, go ahead and select the default Raspberry Pi 32-bit OS. Then go ahead and select your micro SD card from the storage list. Now, before we write, the SD card. So to access the advanced menu for the Raspberry Pi OS installer, hold down Control, Shift, and X. Now this lets you set all of your settings before you flash the Pi. Now I recommend going ahead and setting a host name that's unique for this particular Raspberry Pi, especially if you have multiples on your network. Go ahead and enable SSH and set a secure password. Then go ahead and configure and set up your Wi-Fi. Select your region for your Wi-Fi and go ahead and make sure your locale settings are correct. Once that's all done, go ahead and click save and then write to flash the SD card. Once it's finished, it'll let you know and you can eject the SD card and plug it into your tablet. Now, when you first start up the Pi by holding down the power button for three seconds, it's gonna take about a minute and 30 seconds for it to fully boot into Raspbian. First thing you wanna do is check to make sure the touchscreen is functioning by clicking the Raspberry icon on the top left-hand corner. Now, if you need to find the IP address of this device, the easiest way is to open up a terminal by clicking the terminal icon on the top left-hand corner and typing the command IP space A. Once you have this IP address, you can use that to SSH into your Pi if during the flashing part, you set up a password for SSH. 
All right, so now we have a functional tablet that has Raspberry Pi OS installed on it. And we can interact with the tablet using the touchscreen and also a USB keyboard. Now you can do these entire next set of steps using SSH to type if you don't have an external keyboard available. I'll say for this first step of setting up the virtual keyboard, it's a good idea to be using an external keyboard for it. You, if you'd like to follow along, you can go to this URL below and that'll take you to the quick install guide on the Raspad documentation site, which I find quite helpful, is go ahead and set up the virtual keyboard on Raspad. So if we go to that link, there's really only two commands that we need to run. The first being sudo apt install onboard-y. Now this is gonna install the universal access onboarding system. And the second command we need to run is sudo apt install at-spi2-core. Once both these commands are in, go ahead and we need to access the onboard settings by clicking the Raspberry Pi icon, preferences, and onboard settings. Now once that loads up, we need to check a couple boxes here on the general page. The first one being always show when editing text. This will allow you to click the text field and have the keyboard show up. Then we go to the window tab and tick dock to screen edge. That way it doesn't pop up in the middle of the screen. Then finally, we wanna click on auto show and tick auto show when editing text. Then for layout, we wanna make sure it's selected small. And for theme, they recommend using the dark room theme. So once that's all done, we can hit close and then click start and go to universal access onboard and that will allow the keyboard to come up. Now when you reboot, this should happen automatically, but if you need to, you can always click start universal access onboard to be able to launch the keyboard if it doesn't show up. All right, now that we have the virtual keyboard set up, there are a couple more things that are recommended to set up before you start using the tablet and that is setting up the right click on the Raspad and also the rotating screen service. Now, I'm having some issues with both of those as of right now. I have a sport ticket open with SunFounder, but uh, I figured let's not delay the video anymore to get those last couple small items. So I may follow up with a, a video later on showing how to set those two things up. But if you do go to this link here below, it'll take you, through, take you to the quick user guide where you can see all of these instructions typed out and they're pretty easy to follow along with. So if you feel free to visit this, if you wanna go ahead and go through some of these additional installs. Before we wrap up the video, one thing I do want to show you is some of the projects that they have recommended. They have a whole list of projects here for different activities and different various projects that you can do and set up. Now, obviously, taking you through each of these would be an extremely long video, so I'm just going to quickly hit the high points on a few of these that I think are, are super helpful, and then we'll wrap up the video after. So the first one is, is you can obviously use this as some sort of multimedia consumption device. Um, this runs a Chromium browser, so you can access most things that you need to from here. So we open up my Plex server, and you can see, watch a movie right on there. You can connect to something like Plex or Netflix and consume media on there, obviously with the battery. You've got about four or five hours of battery life on here. So you can set this up, and with the unique design, you can set it up on a surface, like a dresser or a kitchen counter, and watch a movie from there. So good for enter entertaining the little ones, and so you don't have to watch Coco Melon on your, on your large TV. Now, another idea would be to set up a retro gaming console using something like an emulator, or if you wanted to go all in with it, using RetroPie. Now, if you wanted to do RetroPie, you'll have to flash an additional SD card, power down the tablet, and swap that out to bring to switch over to that operating system. Now, that's a quick and easy way for you to segment those two operating systems from each other, or you can go ahead and natively install an emulator directly on the tablet itself. So if you, again, if you click on this link here below, it'll take you through how to set up RetroPie on the tablet and show you what compatible input devices you can use like Xbox controllers. Now, if you watch my last couple of videos that had to do with OctoPie, that's another great application for this tablet. You can either set up a remote monitor. So if you didn't want to dedicate this device, just being your OctoPie instance, you could use this as a remote monitor. So if I was doing a 3D print right now, I could just bring up the OctoPie webpage on this device, sit it down next to my 3D printer and be able to use that touch UI I showed you in last week's video, how to be able to manage and control your 3D printer. Or if you wanted to go make it simple and dedicate this device, you could go ahead and install OctoPrint on the existing image and use it as your primary OctoPi instance, saving you another Raspberry Pi. Obviously, you can connect it using the USB ports on the side. And then with the handy pass-through, if you wanted to use things like LEDs, you could just pass a ribbon cable straight through 
into the pie below and you're off and running. Now, the last project and the one that's most relevant to me as a smart home person would be to set up Home Assistant on the tablet. Obviously, you have two options here. One, just like the OctoPrint, you could access the your Home Assistant instance from the tablet itself. Just bring up the web page to be able to control your home from the tablet. But if you wanted to, you could actually go ahead and fully install Home Assistant on this Raspberry Pi here and have this be your Home Assistant instance or interconnect with another one. Now to do that, all you need to do is set up it, set up Home Assistant using the Docker install. And again, if you click on this link down here below, it will show you the instructions from SunFounder on how to do this. Now, unlike my previous videos where I showed you how to flash Raspberry Pi OS directly to the SD card, this will be using the Raspbian OS, this would be using the Raspbian operating system and then installing Docker and then Home Assistant over the top of it. So you can continue to use the tablet as normal, but it would also be able to run Home Assistant as an additional container. Now, obviously, if you have a larger smart home like mine, this won't make a lot of sense because that adds one more degree of thing that could break, but you could set up a second instance. Or if you're a person who's a boat, van, or RV, this would be a great way of setting up and saving energy by setting up one single device that can do all those things for you and have that run in your for your mobile smart home. All right, so there we go. Now we've taken a look at the Raspad 3, what's included, how to set it up, and also some fun projects that you can try with it. Now, thank you again to SunFounder for sending this to me to try out. I think I've got to find a good project to use this with. I'll probably, I'll probably end up using this tablet for my development projects for the Raspberry Pi because of the easy input for the GPIO pins. Plus, it doesn't look so ugly as a bunch of breadboards and items laying around. So again, thanks to SunFounder for sending this to me. I'll take a look at today. If you're interested in picking one of these up, they are available on Amazon and I've got a link down in the description. I hope you like this new style of video. I try to go more, more heavy with B-roll. So if you like that, please let me know in the comments below. If you do run into problems or have questions on this or any other topic, please feel free to jump into our Discord at this link here below. And again, thank you for watching this video and have a great rest of your week.